welcome to spirit and life youtube channel a channel dedicated to sharing inspiring and edifying christian content by seasoned ministers of god's word you are about to listen to a sermon that is guaranteed to grow your spirit man and change your life this sermon is by apostle michael robo and is titled the economy of the glory you are about to listen to a sermon that will usher you into the realms of glory. You are about to listen to a sermon that will take you into the glory realm, the realm which you were born in as a believer. You are about to function from that realm. As you listen to this sermon, may you be blessed. On the name of the Lord, somebody that knew authority stood and said, God doesn't need to come. I am here. And that was what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1. He said, be a followers of me. Even as I am the follower of Christ. That means in case you don't see Jesus, when you see me, you are seeing him. That's what God wants us to do. But all of these possibilities operate in an economy that we call the economy of the glory. When the glory is present, the glory does not just come to address need. The glory comes to make men become like God. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, when God was speaking, he said, let us make man in our own image. After our likeness, let them have dominion. He didn't say, let us help them have dominion. So long as they are able to carry our glory, dominion will become a byproduct. But unfortunately, the man sinned and fell from glory. And so when Paul came to diagonize the crisis of the man, he didn't say the man was weak. He said in Romans chapter 3 verse 23, he said, for all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. That means the reason the man is sick is because he has what? Fallen short of the glory of God. The reason the man is weak is because he has what? Fallen short of the glory of God. The reason the man is defeated is because he has what? Fallen short of the glory of God. And so when the glory of God is restored, that man will come back to the place of dominion and he will begin to function on earth like a god. Because the truth is, what God wants to create is to create other gods. The idea was not to create a man who is mundane. He called him a man because he is a god living on earth. That's the idea. Because the man was a carrier of the fullness of divinity. And so he was an expression of divinity. And so when he lost God, he lost everything. He began to struggle like an animal because the life of the flesh began to rule him. But before he fell, he was not designed to walk by the life of the flesh. He was designed to walk by the, the God life. That means when the man shows up, God has come. Anything you are looking for, the moment that man comes, that man provides it. And when you look at the man, you will know that this man doing this thing is doing it by something else that is hidden. And so when you meet the man, the man now leads you to the God that is hidden on his inside. This is why he said, this is the mystery of this age. In Colossians 1.26, he said, Christ in you, the hope of glory. So what God did was, he hid himself into the man and allowed the man to manifest him. And so when you touch the man, you touch the God that is on his inside. But when the man loses the ability to host and manifest God. Every time he has a problem, he goes back to call on God to come and handle the matter and God will go back. But what God wanted to do is to be trapped in the man so that when the man handles the problem, God handles the problem. When the man deals with the matter, God deals with the matter. Unfortunately, he didn't understand what God was creating. He didn't know that God wanted to talk, but he wanted to talk through the man. He didn't know that God wanted to work wonders but he wanted to walk wonders through the man. So the man still thinks that God wants to come out and manifest himself and go back. He knows how to manifest himself and he did that for aeons before the angels. If you study heaven in Revelation 4 and 5, the Bible says God appears on the throne by himself. God doesn't manifest in heaven through any agency. God manifests in heaven by himself and for aeons, no angel has been able to look upon him. 
the moment he appears, they fall on their faces. So it was impossible for God to have relationship with them. And so this time around, he is not intending to manifest by himself. What he wants to do is to manifest through you. So you become the theater that gives expression to God. But when God is not handled on the inside of a man, the man does not only lose the ability to reflect God. Every day he's calling on God to come and answer prayers. And he's excited. Listen, I know there are verses in scripture where people call upon the Lord, where God encourages people to call upon him. But you need to understand the difference between scripture and revelation. You can pick a scripture, quote it, you will be correct in a dispensation. But when God moves, that your scripture, that is a correct scripture, may not be conformed to revelation. I give you an instance, for example, when you are dealing with the subject of healing. If you study the book of Exodus 25, 23, the Bible said, you shall remember the Lord your God. You shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy waters. And it shall remove sickness from the midst of thee. That is a scripture. And that is correct. And today, people are serving God for him to remove sickness from their body. And when they do it, because their faith is released, God heals them. But God is no longer there. Because you don't need to serve God to be healed. That was what he told them when they left Egypt. When they moved further, the Bible came. And the Bible began to speak to us from Isaiah 53. And he said he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes, we were healed. So we are no longer debtors to sickness. And so a man who has this revelation is superior to the man who has the first. Because why the man who has the first revelation is trying to scrub the floor in order to have fruit of the womb. And it's correct. If that's what helps your faith, that's good. But that's a lower revelation. Another man doesn't need to scrub the floor. Another man is just praising God because he has come to the realization that by his strife, he was healed. And so when sickness trying to attack him, he will look back to the cross and say, Satan, you have no place here. So when that man is scrubbing the floor, it's an act of worship. He's not bargaining with God. Why one is scrubbing the floor and is bargaining the, the, with God? Lord, give me a fruit of the womb. Give me a son. Another one is scrubbing the floor and dancing and singing and praising God. Both of them are doing the same thing, but from a different level. One is doing it to receive. Another one is doing it because she has already received. So one is trying to get the solution. Another one has gone past the solution. So you need to understand the difference between scripture and revelation. Meanwhile, there is yet another who is not just looking at the cross anymore. There is another man who is functioning at another level. He said, that same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in your mortal body. He said he will quicken your body. He will quicken. So that man is not even trusting God for healing. He doesn't know whether sickness exists. He doesn't know. When you are talking about sickness, he can ask you, what does that mean? And you look at him and say, are you crazy? He's in another world entirely. Where he's functioning by revelation is a realm where sickness cannot exist. Those are the kinds of dimensions that men like John G. Lake handled. And the plague that others are trusting God not to contact. When the plague touch him, the plague die. The virus touch him, the virus die. It's not something to hear and just start shouting and say, if I touch the virus, it will die. It depends on the world where you are walking in. Because when you enter revelation, revelation becomes a civilization. A man who said, that same spirit that is in me, quickens my mortal body, doesn't pray for healing. That man walks in divine health. If you ask him about sickness, he will laugh at you. It's a different world entirely. So there is a difference between quoting a scripture and walking in revelation. Revelation is a spectrum. For those of you who study science, you know that this white light you see is not white. This white light you see is a combination of seven colors. When the light passes through a spectrum, it will divide into seven. You will be shocked to see red inside this white light. You will be shocked to see green inside this white light. When you are quoting isolated scripture, it's like picking the individual lights in the spectrum. But a man who has revelation has embodied the whole light. And so if he finds you operating at a lower revelation, he knows that's what helps your faith. He will allow you, but when you want to grow, you will move from there. Because a time will come when, if you are doing kingdom business, you can't afford to waste time praying to be healed. 
Because there are territories you will enter that your first step will be with sickness and death. There are places God will send you to and it will be plagued. You need to carry something that makes you live above the realm of sickness to be able to do kingdom there. If you, are, if you have not come to that level of revelation, then your work with God will be limited. And so what God designed when he made us was for us to function in the realm of the glory. And in the realm of the glory, you don't call on God to come and answer the question. In the realm of the glory, you become the reflector of God. Anything you touch, God touch. Anything you say, God says. At that level, you operate in the rulership dimension. And so when the devil came, he was smart. He didn't take food from the man. He knows if he takes food from the man and the glory is there, the man may not even need to eat. Because Moses was in the glory and for 40 days he didn't eat and he didn't notice. And so if the devil came to take fruit or food from the man, the man may not have noticed because in the glory you may not even be hungry. So the devil may keep the food for a lifetime and the man may not even notice. Why? Because in the glory you live beyond time. When the devil keeps food for 100 years, the man may think it's one second. And maybe he eats after six hours. That means the devil will keep that food for 6,000 years before the man notices. So the devil is smart. When the devil came, he didn't take anything that was material from the man. He went for the one thing that makes the man operate like a god. He went for the glory. And the moment the man lost the glory, he lost everything. If you like, give him food, he will need food again. If you like, give him money, he will leave money again. Because this time around, it was not just about what he handled. It was a vacuum in his soul. A hole has been created in his soul that makes him desire things other than God. And so when God wanted to solve the problem of the man, even God too knew that what the man needed was not a healing. What the man needed was not money. What the man needed was not fame. God knew that what the man needed was what he lost in the first place. And so when God showed up, he began to create a system that will restore the man back to the glory. But for him to arrive at that point, he needed to deal with some obstacles. And so when Jesus manifested, the first thing Jesus did was to address the things that the man was suffering from. And so in Luke chapter 4, from verse 18 and 19, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now, that was the realm Jesus was operating in. If you are operating at that realm, you are superior to the man who possesses things. And he said, because the spirit of the Lord is upon me, he said, he has empowered me to preach the gospel to the poor. You see, the first people Jesus was dealing with, the first question he was answering, he was answering the question of poverty. And poverty in this sense was not lack. Poverty in this sense was a depravity of the glory of God. Jesus had the fullness of God, so he doesn't know what poverty means. But he came to a world that had poverty. And so the first thing he did was to preach the gospel to them. To let them know that there is something coming that is superior to healing. Because everybody he healed died. There is something coming that is superior to money. It's the economy of the glory. He said the spirit of the Lord is upon me. I want to bring you to where you too, the spirit of the Lord will be upon you. But before you get there, let's deal with the crisis you have first. And he said, the broken hearted were healed. Those who were deaf, their ears were unstopped. Those who were blind, their eyes were open. Those who were in prison, he delivered them from captivity. Because you have to first of all deal with the crisis the man is going through. That's why I told you, you want to preach the gospel to somebody who is hungry. He will ask you first, sorry, do you have 20 naira there? Let me eat bread. I know this your message is a strong message but i'm hungry let me eat first in fact james was teaching he said pure religion is one that visits the widow helps the orphan that's the only time you find religion in christianity in the place of charity so when jesus came he needed to do charity first and so acts chapter 10 verse 38 the bible said how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power who went about doing good healing all that were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. But what God wanted to do was not healing. If it was healing, there wouldn't have been need for Jesus to come because before Jesus came, men were being healed. When Jesus, what Jesus came to do was not to bless men to become wealthy. Before Jesus came, there were mighty prophets that could change the fortune of people. In fact, Elisha stood and said, 
by this time tomorrow, by this time, he changed the economy just by talking. And the prime minister doubted him and laughed. And he said, well, because you laughed, you will see it, you will not enjoy it. And the moment things changed, the man was trampled upon. So if it was economic situation, that was the issue, it, there wouldn't have been need for Jesus to come. Because every other challenge of man, apart from the glory, was handled before Jesus came. The moment Jesus came, the first thing he did was to tell the man how he operates. He said, the way I operate is that I walk under the cloud of the glory. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Even in Acts 10, 38, he said, for God was with him. That means whatever Jesus does for you, if you have not come to that point where for God was with him, becomes your experience. You have not received anything from God. But in order for man to understand this, he needed to show man what happens when God is with you. He needed to show man what happens when somebody is walking under the glory. And so they told Jesus, Lazarus was sick and unto death. And Jesus said, okay, I've heard. And he continued doing what he was doing. Few days later, they came and said, don't worry, he's dead now. The moment they said Lazarus is dead, that was when Jesus got ready to go. He wasn't just trying to raise the dead. He was showing man what it looks like to walk in the glory. Because he was going to leave the earth soon. And when he leaves the earth, he's going to bring men under the glory. Because when you come under the glory, you are not coming to receive what Jesus was giving. You are actually coming to become like the Jesus that gave. But for you to understand how the glory economy works, Jesus needed to show you. And so when somebody dies, Jesus comes there and says he's asleep. That means in the glory realm, you can't die. Because death does not exist there. And in the glory realm, the second thing you need to understand is that whatever you call a situation, that's what it is. Remember, when Adam was in Eden, the Bible said whatever name he called the animals, that was the name thereof. In the glory, anything you call anything becomes that thing. And so you can be going through crisis and you said, no, this is journey to greatness. Wait for a while. You will discover that that thing that was called crisis will become the reason for your lifting. You can be going through pains and people look at you and say, no, God is working on me because there is a power coming on my life. And after a while, you will go out and people will see power that they cannot explain because in the glory, two things happen. Death does not exist. And whatever you call a situation, that's what it is. And so when Lazarus died, Jesus said, let's go and wake him up. And Thomas said, oh, in the realm of men, if somebody dies, he's gone home. We cry out our heart. When we are done crying, we bury him. And Jesus said, no, he's not dead, he's asleep. In the realm of glory, men don't die. And so when Jesus walked there, they say, oh, if you were here, he would not have died. Because in the realm of mortars, there is such a thing as too late. But in the realm of the glory, time does not exist. So there is no too early and there is no too late. The reason is because whatever you call it, that's what it is. And so, any time you come is the right time. And so Jesus showed up and said, Have I not told you before? If thou wouldest believe. He didn't say thou shouldest see the resurrection. He didn't say thou shouldest see healing. He said, If thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Because in the glory, anything is possible. Healing exists there. Resurrection exists there. And because they wouldn't listen, he pushed them aside. And he went to the front of the tomb and he said, Lazarus, comfort. And the Bible said, he that was dead came back to life. Some of you who are going through pains now, you are calling on God. Father, please look at my trouble. And he's looking at you. No, your trouble is not the problem. You have not found the glory. If you find the glory, that your trouble will become the reason for your manifestation. Because you will learn how to give commandments. Because that thing you call problem, you were designed to command it. That's why I said, I've seen an abomination upon the face of the earth. He said, princes are walking. White slaves are riding on horses. Because the things that we should command are the things we are calling on God for. The things that we should change are the things that are frustrating us. When you walk in the glory, every crisis becomes a potential testimony. When you walk in the glory, every crisis becomes an opportunity to reveal God. Because the, the easiest way to receive, reveal God is to talk about Him. There are better ways of revealing God. When Jesus wanted to reveal God in Canaan, He waited. The Bible said the wine was out. Uh -huh. That time, I cannot reveal God in a way that a fake person cannot reveal God. And he said, feed the jars and fill them to the brine. And when they filled the jars, he didn't pray. Because in the glory, whatever you call it, that's what it is. He said, fetch from the jar, take it.
to the governor of the field. You don't try. Why don't you start with your disciples? You want to embarrass yourself. You are testing something and you are starting with the governor of the field. Take it there. The one who is talking walks in the glory. And when they took it to the governor of the field and he's drunk, he said, what is wrong with you? Men usually take the best wine first. But you have kept the best wine until we are tired of drinking. Why did you do this? Because one of the wines was brewed on a tree. The other one was brewed in the glory realm. The wine from the glory realm, when you drink it, it doesn't stop in the ceremony. You carry it from the ceremony and the wine begins to change you. You may drink that wine and after a while, you go home and you find yourself. You now say, what are you doing? You know, he said, be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess. But be filled, because the wine of the flesh is alcohol, but the wine of the glory is the Holy Ghost.